Hi, Sunshines. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Taylor Ann. And I'm Lori Ann. And, and together, together, we are Mad Girls. And you want to take the intro a little bit? Okay. What's going on in this video? So today, mm -hmm. the day that you're viewing this video, is a year to the day that I lost it on live. <laughs> okay. And, and spilled all our biz. I had to take the mask off. We had yeah. to take the mask off because, but no, I, I mean, I say that jokingly, we had to take the mask off. But what we really called ourselves doing was making it a safe and happy place for our viewers. And no one knew at the time what our lives were really like. And we do our Friday Night Lives, um, as the OG Mad Curls fam knows. And all of our new viewers um, are finding out that we do Friday Night Actually, we're doing Thursday, Thursday night lives now. now. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but up to last week, we had been doing Friday night lives, and we were doing videos daily, and we were putting out content. We have well over 400 videos on our channel, and we just looked like we had a like an idealistic life. It wasn't that part wasn't the facade. Like it was our happy place. We enjoyed doing videos. We looked forward to getting up. It gave us purpose and a point, and um, it was our happy time when we filmed. However, um, the pressure was mounting, mm -hmm. and that particular Friday night, November 23rd of 2018, 18. we were having you know, a fun time, and we were talking about relationships, it was Lori's wisdom points and all of that, and our viewers at the time did not even begin to know what we were going through. Mm -hmm. We were weeks away from being homeless. I had not shared with the viewers that I had multiple sclerosis, and now, you guys all know that know us and know our channel but i that part of it i wasn't ready to share really and i had a cognitive moment like i froze and now when i something like that happens i'm like oh, you all know my memory i can't remember whatever and then you'll take over and you'll try to like have me recall something but at that point the more i try to remember the words i was saying because it was like on a roll and when you have ms that just happens you just get like a blank slate and you can't remember a thing yeah. aren't these cool guys she wanted to film this outside and it's like 50 degrees and so that's why she's bundled and i'm bundled and if you hear like, crunching doggies on his tether walking yeah. around so we are just filming this outside because it's just like you know you guys you know i go off the rails but yeah. i just thought it was just so cute so i had to point it out as i'm talking using my hands yeah. i don't have the witch fingers from halloween but close enough but so. anyway um so she could i couldn't recall and i didn't want that to be like a thing on the channel and i just literally froze and what do i do when i freeze like I was just like, I can't do this. I mean, guys, picture live. Guys, we're, we're gonna insert the clip. We're gonna insert the clip so, mm -hmm. so you can see it. All the videos that we're talking about because we had to come back and do the art truth. So I'm gonna insert the the live, that clip of that part of the live yeah. when you're just like, I can't, I can't. And then you left and like, clearly I was shocked because I was just like, what's going on right now? This is like a live stream, this is live yeah. stream. And then we ended up coming back and like spilling all the beans. So I will insert that um, yeah. that link so you can, there's the video still up there in all its glory, the live stream, the mm -hmm. art truth video. And then we came back like a couple days after the our truth video for like a thank you video so there's three videos that went yeah. down yeah so you'll insert the part when I, when I froze yeah it was towards the end of the first one or maybe it wasn't supposed to be the end but it soon became the end I really kind of like left you in the lurch and I just literally got up and walked so-called offset natural community you know we talk about anything everything you might find something you might enjoy it whatever is he flexible enough to kind of sit and watch it with you or is he really gonna say no more no more YouTube on Friday nights no I want to spend time with you Mm, that's a little different story because he's trying to change like who you are and this is not anything like bad like you're learning how to do something for your hair and the health of your hair and all of that Ashley Harris said she didn't invite Philip to watch Friday Night Live she just <laughs> said she won't be going out because she'll be watching Friday Night Live I know I thought about that because like Fridays is like date night and I was like if I ever get into a relationship like I'll I run the channel, guys. I can't do Friday Night Lives. Like, no, I would have, like, I mean, I, I couldn't do date night because I'd have Friday Night Lives. Unless so. we introduce him to um, the big girl's boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's different. It's the fact that he doesn't want to sacrifice. The channel would only meet a fiance. I'm gonna be rolling people in and out of here like people. No. You know, like, no the channel ain't meeting nobody. No. Until no. we know that they're long term. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No. So yeah, no. You have it's it's the nature of the the um what's going on at that point. Yeah. So you can't just say um. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. All right. Hold on. I don't know. I'm just all of a sudden. You can't, we, we were talking about what I have to give up Friday Night Lives. All right, I'm sorry, guys. I, we took a week off because things were going on, and now it's kind of like, all right, I'm going to just exit really quick, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Well, it is, it is 11 o'clock, so should we sign out? Yeah, I'm going to say goodbye. Let me just kind of. Like, okay, all right. all right. So I, she was going so hot and heavy, all that wisdom. <laughs> okay, so. 
it is 11 so we are going to peace out Should, i'll do the uh the good night roll call yeah. myself all right I know you're part of the good night. You want to be part of the night roll call? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, that's cool. All right, All right guys, guys, we're peacing out. Don't up, I, you know, we will share what our lives are about, okay? In a little while, everybody goes through things. We're having it really rough right now, and we try to hide and mask it from you guys at times, but, um... <laughs> it's okay, Ma. Okay. All right. So, we're saying good night. You want to cut it now? Should we say good night? We'll say goodnight, yeah. You want to say goodnight? Yeah, okay. We're, we're okay, okay? I just want to let you guys know because I feel like a mom of the channel. All right, okay. so we're okay. I don't want anyone to worry, but sometimes things can get, get heavy, and I'm glad sometimes true emotions come out because these are my true emotions, and that just goes to show how much we love the channel that we still plow through, okay, when we're going through really rough times, and so this is a really, really, really rough time that we're going through right now. And so for all of those out there during the holiday season or in real life or whatever, People go through things, and we're going through it really rough right now. And so, but we didn't want to give up. We took off a week. <laughs> Apparently, it wasn't enough, but we're going to keep going through. And so, we appreciate all those that see my real emotion, see like my weakness right now, my softness, because I always go hard and um, and I try to do what I can do for you guys. But um, I just want to let you guys know I love you. You guys keep our family in your prayers and um. I'm sorry, like, I'm falling apart at the end like this, but, um... It's okay. All right, we're okay. gonna go. Okay, right. bye, guys. Bye, guys. And, um, Taylor, I think you've, you've put... Well, you'll see the clip, but I remember if I can recall... I kind of watched it last week, but it's kind of like a cringe moment. It's still kind of like... I never went like, back and watched it's still kind any of, of the like, videos again. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, it's still kind of, like, difficult to watch because it was real life. And mm -hmm. so I kind of watched it last week a little bit, and then I was like, oh, wow, I really did that. Oh, wow, I really did that. Yeah. So I couldn't really go on, but I and believe... And for me, like, I, I was shocked. And then we... I think I wrapped it up. I was like, okay, guys, basically, you know, Lorian signed. See you next week. Like, mm -hmm. bye, kind of thing. And then... When we turned the cameras off, you, we were like, you know, we can't go out like that. I can't yeah. go out like that. Like, I'll never go back on camera again or film. Like, we have to address it. For months, what's going on? For months, um, we have been holding things in and we just kind of plow through. And um, all right, two reasons why I kind of lost it before. All right. We come on, we talk about our hair, we do our hair. And I think we just try to be these perfect people for you guys because we see we felt like we saw the need in the community and that you guys draw so much from us and so we just keep hiding what we're really about and then I think I was putting more stress on myself when we would go to different events because I think you guys I'm not a character I am who I am but I was so busy for hiding who I truly was first I want to share with everybody that um, I have um, an illness and it's called multiple sclerosis okay and nobody knew that and I felt like it was something that I should hide from you guys, and I don't know why. Because sometimes when you realize that other people have something, then you're like, oh, wow, and it gives people strength. So, okay, so Lori has multiple sclerosis, but yet she still takes each day as it comes, and she's still able to go forward. So for me to expose that, so to speak, and you guys know what it is, um, I, I want to, I think um, March is called National Multiple Sclerosis Month, and like, every month has um, something, like I think, October was Breast Cancer Month, um, and I think March, I know because I have it, is um, National Multiple Sclerosis Month. And I wanted to have all this extra, the orange in the background, and orange ribbons and balloons, and I'd really big build it up. But because I struggle, I think when I'm under stress more, that's why throughout the night you kept seeing me kind of like forget things. And because cognitively at times I forget things, that's part of the illness, um, it affects uh, my brain. Um, it affects my hands, okay, so sometimes when I'm spraying my hair, I can't, the bottle doesn't work because it's a bad day for me. When I go to events, I have to weigh it out. Who will see me? Who will see me? When I went to Fashion Week, I had a cane, okay, and I'm like, oh my God, who's going to see me? You know, and this has got to stop, okay, this pressure that I'm putting on myself to hide from you guys so you think I'm this perfect person. I'm not, okay. It's called an invisible illness because to see me, you can't see it. And I almost feel like I have to prove to people that I'm very sick. And I'm not, it's not a death thing. I'm not dying from it. But it is, I do have difficult days. All right. And so uh, the worst part of it for me is fatigue. I'm constantly, constantly tired all the time. And so we really push through. Now we're going through an extremely, extremely, extremely difficult time in our lives. And it's just compounding my illness. So on top of having this illness that I've struggled with since I've been in my 20s, 
we shared with um, a lot of you guys, if you're new, there's a video that we touched on it. We didn't get super personal with it, but a lot of people that have been with us know that my husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer back, when was Last he? May. Last May, okay. So, again, mouth dry tonight, guys. I'm just letting y'all know this is tough, okay. All right. Mm. He was diagnosed with prostate cancer as if what I have isn't enough. Now I have to be supportive um, of my husband. It was very difficult for him. I have always been a stay-at-home mother, as you know. And he had, he was diagnosed and he really could not handle it. Last year, around this time, he actually left, okay? And he handled it on his own, which was very difficult for me. He moved into a hotel and I had to deal with my husband having cancer and him not being here. I couldn't take care of him. He didn't want me to. And like, Everyone knew the dynamic. Everyone knew my rogue ways. Everybody knew my bougie ways. You know, everybody knew kind of like my character, so to speak. That was my personality, but I enhanced it, you know, for the channel more so. Um, kind of, sort of. Not really. I'm really, like, I'm really, you're pretty much you. I'm really pretty much All me. All the time. I always yeah. say what you see is what you get. But um, I allow it to go on, like the, like the bougie, like, like guys, how could I possibly be bougie when I was like practically a couple of weeks away from being homeless? Yeah. But um, it's like what I would have in, in my dream world. But so that part of it um, was all kept hidden. And so, so now at this point, we had to deal with the landlord. She literally said, and I think it was like a fib at the time, that you know she would put the house on the market and all of that, and we were late with the rent and all that, and we just panicked. We panicked because there wasn't, there was like no yeah. other option. I think this was a few days before, like the live stream, the crack on live stream. You mm -hmm. were like, you know, um, we have to try a GoFundMe, and so we actually had a GoFundMe up at the time. You were and mortified. like, guys, people ask me what's my darkest moment in life. I say the GoFundMe. Like for me, I was like, you know, mom, like you've lived your life. Like I'm still young. I'm like, this is my reputation. Like we're going to put it up there. It's the GoFundMe. Mm -hmm. But like there was literally no other options. And like typically like you'll listen to what I have to say, but like you kind of like blocked me out. You're like, you know, I have to do what I have to do. This is what we have to do. Like we need help basically. And so we had to post yeah. the GoFundMe and like, I was just mortified. I was horrified. I was just like, oh my gosh, the situation was, and then you cracked on live and then we had yeah. to air ourselves out like yeah. more like, oh my gosh, like what's happening yeah, kind of thing the, the situation was um 28 years married last year we just celebrated 29 years but at that point 28 years married my husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer at the time i'm just going to kind of like do a quick recap for those that are new and for those that know or i mean you, like, guys okay so everybody you, yeah. like everybody um I'm like I'm recapping because yeah. uh, even though you guys follow us and stuff, um, there's new just people. Follow us. Yeah, yeah. New people. So we'll just say the objective yeah. of this video is to kind of give you guys like a one year to like the day like mm -hmm. update of where we are. But we are going to recap. This video might kind of be all over, yes. all over the place. We kind of had an organization, but now we're just kind of talking like we normally do. We just kind yeah. of chat with you guys. So we left it off. We're just chatting about the situation that happened last year, mm -hmm. where we are now, it's all the details. Yeah. So it's that's what, That's what's going on. So sorry if it's kind of all over the place, but we're just we're just chatting. You know, and we're giving those that have hope that have that have lost hope during the holiday seasons that there there is a better day better days do come i mean last year this time again we said november 23rd that is smack dab holiday season okay and so i think it was the day after thanksgiving perhaps even so now we're like going into yep. the christmas season mm -hmm. couldn't get a christmas tree all that stuff okay so yeah. this so if you're going through that at this time then this video is for you yes okay because there's hope on the horizon so there we are filming and we're talking relationships and all that um and at that point my husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer. He was the only one that worked. I was a stay-at-home mom the entire time that I married, that I was married, um, and still am married. But, um, so I never worked. So um, he's older now, plus he had cancer. And so in Connecticut, no place was hiring. Um, my oldest son was in the military. Yep. Tay was in college. I never worked. You had graduated from school and could work, but because of my MS and what was going on, like the dark moment, you know, we're in a dark place in our lives. You kind of were like around to help your dad, to help me, like to support the family. So we were just in a really bad place at that point. And I think it all just came to a crescendo at that very moment in the video. And so I got up, walked off. All right, so now that's where we're at. So then we sat down and I said, you know what, Tay? I said, I, I know me. If I don't get back on right now, I don't know what I'm going to say. I said, but if I don't, I'll, I'll never get back on again. I said, I will be embarrassed. I'll be ashamed. I'll, I'll overthink it. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, I said, click on the camera. We're just going to click on the yep. camera and, and we're going to share. And it was a live stream. It was so a live stream. We went back 
live again. Of course, like all you guys came like flooding back in again. And mm -hmm. some people who missed the first live came into that live. There were people were like, wait, what's going on? What's yeah. happening? Even the people who were there, they were like, what's going on? What's happening? Because yeah. like all you guys ever saw was the high sunshines and the yeah. hair products and the hair flipping and the music and the jokes and the live streams. And so this was just like, like no one knew what was going on like behind the scenes. Like some at all. people that knew that saw that. Um, I don't know like what the reaction was, but it was just like, okay, they're back because it was an odd ending yeah and I, and I knew that and so I said we can't just come on next week and act like all is you, you know all is well we now we have to um uncover what's been going on and so we literally just sat back down in front of the camera tears and just tears <laughs> you know we couldn't hold back the tears I didn't even try to hold back the tears because yeah. to try to hold back the tears would make it even worse so we just shared our dark secret you know what, where we were in our lives what we were going through and that's when I think the Mad Curls fam evolved that's when it began at that point the support that we had that we did not get in the world we did not get any support because we didn't like some people like plan like the art shoes like you know like the joke in the community like you know the gray sweatshirts and mm -hmm. the hoodies and like all that kind of stuff like we called it the art truth because like it really was the art truth but it was absolutely not planned and like the reaction we couldn't have like planned for that to no. happen because well, like, god knows i would never have cracked on camera like that that was who i was on the channel i was the mom on the channel mother and daughter curls mad curls i'm the mother you're the daughter and i was the strong one i was the one that you guys would come to i would get the dms i would get the emails asking me for advice i'm the strong one and for me to crack and show such vulnerability was very difficult so it definitely wasn't planned it was just pressure you know you can't help it you know yeah. um, I, I lost it literally so again the clip um, has been inserted and you'll see that but anyway we turned the camera back on and just shared with those that were like what is going on scratching your head new people coming out at that point and old people but at that point I mean the support the um, the utter support and when I was going through this last week I started getting all teary-eyed and like you don't get started so I'm gonna try not to get started again yeah but the support was unbelievable because the GoFundMe had been up mm -hmm. for a couple days at that point and like there was literally like no help to be had at all. Like that was our last resort. Literally the oh, GoFundMe was the last resort yeah. and like silence, like basically silence. Like yeah. it was nothing. It was like, medical, it yeah. was financial, it was a roof over our head, it was the rent, it was the food. Just that very day we had gone to the soup kitchen or, or the, um, the pantry, the, pantry. The, the food pantry. And what an experience, okay? This is like not even like food stamps. This is like the food pantry where you're grocery shopping for those that have been there before, for those that might be there in the future. I mean, it literally is what an awesome place to be, but I personally had never been in a, in a place like that. And I was just perhaps proud at the time, but um, my husband just like digs in and he just does what he has to do. So he acted like he was at the big Y or a stop and shop and I just wanted to get out of there so fast. So that was like pressure mounting in my head. Like that whole experience that day, you know, just like, I was just like, you know, oh my gosh, like I can't believe like where I'm at. So it was all of that that we hit. And then every night we have to come on like, hi, you know, sunshine, welcome back to our channel. And so it was just too much. Yeah. So once we cracked, we came back on and the R-Truth video is out there for you all to see now. And, but as we were telling our story, the heavens opened up. It was like mammon from the sky. Mammon? 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 Mammon. Mammon. Manna. 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 <laughs> Manna, from the, Manna from the heavens. Okay, yeah. and the money just started dropping. We just started seeing the money dropping, the money dropping. I mean, everybody, like the Mad Cross family, all the people that were on the live stream, the money was just coming in. And at that point, we were just like, wait, halt, wait, halt. Like, I think they were super chatting in at the time. Yeah, there were super chats. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, no, because YouTube, you know, takes um, a little bit of that money. So I said, no, just please, like, we have a GoFundMe. So everyone's like, where, where, where? And then we, I think we did a cash app. And at that point, we were pulled out of that um, that immediate urgency yeah. but of course you know that money goes I mean we live in Connecticut Fairfield County one of the highest places to live um, in the United States and so the money absolutely helped us pull ourselves we were, out I was shook like they, we, we were I think both they shook say like people don't want hand outs they want hands up I think it was a hand up absolutely a hand up uh, but you can't just like live on people's GoFundMe forever you know and so it gave us a chance to think it gave us a chance to breathe and so that's how we were rescued at that point last year. The Mad Curls fam. The Mad Curls fam. And Strangers became, on the internet that did yeah. not know us. Like, then it's like, except that they watched, like, watched our videos. And I'm like, people mm -hmm. care about us like that much. Like, mm -hmm. people we've never met before in our lives. They just watch our videos and like interact with us on our live streams. Like, it was like shocking. It was so shocking. Mm -hmm. It really was. Yeah, it became like the Mad Curls army because you guys were no joke. It really showed. 
Um, I think sometimes, you know, I hate to say, but I'm just going to be honest because this is a video where we're completely honest. I think sometimes people that are close to you and they claim to love you, they kind of like when they see you going down. Let's see how they're going to get out of that. Maybe I needed to kind of get like um, a check. She needs to get a check on her behavior, whatever, her attitude, like good, she deserved what she's getting. I felt because nobody helped. Nobody, it's almost like they enjoyed it. It's almost like they enjoyed our downfall. And so there was absolutely that, the whole idea that there was silence in the Department of Health as far as um, when I say Department of Health, it sounds like a, a yeah, government Yeah, but as far agency. as like, you know, people close to yeah. you, like family, friends, like, no. you know, church organizations, like that kind of thing. No. Like, it was just like, like, and we're going to be homeless. Like, people oh knew God. that GoFundMe more than we did because yeah. I was getting like um, ramblings in, you know, from different people. Oh, you today you got to just see what you got today. But it was like we weren't getting like, but that night, okay, that night, at that point, it silenced everyone. It silenced everyone. I think at that point, People were not taking the channel seriously, like we were frivolous, flipping and flopping our hair. We were told one time at church, you know, people like, you know, wasting their time flipping and flopping their hair online and all that. And it might have looked like flipping and flopping hair, but that flipping and flopping of hair, you know, that was the only gift I had. I was 51 and never worked a day in my life. And all I had was hair on my head. I raised my three kids. And then what do I do? Yeah. I had MS. And so I flipped and flopped my hair. But that well, flipping and flopping. We always said, though, that our channel was more than um, just like hair products and stuff. Because we do have like those chats on our live stream and like we connect with you guys and we get to know each other and we and on our live streams we talk about more than just hair products so yeah. like we, it's always been more than that and so like clearly like we we've touched you guys because you like you guys were like on it like immediately yeah. and and, and then like, so at that point they're like our gift to you or, or my gift because you know i'm the chatty one and i was very transparent and so i couldn't give much at that point but i could give of myself so that's when i opened up my facebook page to make it i think sometimes when you know brands are out there or influencers are out there they really don't do that you know like you'll see them on instagram posing and pictures and stuff but no one has like these exchanges these conversations you know i definitely have a uh, facetime people that I've met yeah. that time. i mean one afternoon i was on the couch and the phone rang and it was a, it was a subscriber picked up the phone, I'm like, hey girl, what you doing? Like, it became like that kind of a thing. Okay, yeah. that's you, Keisha Slade, girl, I love you so much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, it, it became like that because I'm not I'm not fake. I, I mean, what you see is what you get with me. Um, I'm 51. I'm not about all the social media. I'm not thinking I'm a superstar or anything. I'm a normal person just trying to live my life, raise my three kids, and, um, and marry. It was just trying to be a good wife, a good mother, and just live my life. So all of this pretense and everybody putting us on pedestals, like I don't but like buy into that because that's not me. I knew what I was going through. Mm. So I think that's when um, the Facebook page almost became a family, and I think that's when it all became a family. So I think one night somebody said, "How do you get to become a Macros family member?" And we're like, "You're talking right now. You're, yeah. You are now part of the family. Just showing up, just being present, showing up, being present. There's no nothing to fill out, no applications, nothing you have to do. You know, no long standing. Just you want to be a part of it. You're a part of it. Welcome yeah. to the family. You know, it's just love, support. There's no hate. You know, you, as you can see in the comments." Um, though, even though we might speak something out, I'm sure now all the hate will come in. But if you really check the comments, there's very, 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 very little negativity mm -hmm. um, in our comments because it's just all about love. You guys help each other out and all of that. So at that point, um, that gave us a hand up. And then I had to kind of like start my new life. And it got rough. Okay, it got rough. I'm a very expressive, very emotional person. And I basically spilled all the tea week after week after week you know the bitterness the anger the um the breakup of the marriage it was the, though the help was there um no one really wants a hand up hand out they don't want anything that my husband wanted a job at the time he had the cancer i had the ms and we were just like working against each other so though everybody came to the rescue um it still wasn't enough to support the marriage that had so deteriorated because it was just so bad that amount of stress that amount of stress you know and so ultimately that happened november 23rd and by the first of the year um he announced two two weeks notice because he announced it actually on christmas day it's just a christmas we said like from hell like oh my gosh like i really yeah. couldn't believe it. it was like a madness spencer had come home from the military we were happy to see him um the lifestyle was different for him because he had been in the military for quite a bit of time and so regimented and he came back and he was just like acting like a crazy man that day um, came back to chaos came basically. back to chaos yeah. the house had fallen apart around him the house that he knew the mother and the father that he knew 
on Christmas Day, he decides he's going to do a major, <laughs> like, decluttering, and he's tearing down the stairs with all kinds of things, you know, shoes and coats, and, and I'm trying to cook dinner, and yeah. oh my God, you just could cut the tension with Which a knife. Which the dinner wasn't even like a dinner like we normally do. It was like mm -hmm. frozen meat and like frozen vegetables and rice. Like, it was just like, we just threw something together, like, whatever, like, like yeah. nobody cared. <laughs> yeah, nobody cared. Yeah. And so my husband made the grand announcement that he was moving, and... You know, I always rounded it off to the nearest tenth, as I say. So 30 years of marriage, he told me he was leaving. And I'm like, basically, to what? And he was going to Colorado. So he had gotten a job there. And I'm like, well, when were you going to share this with me? He said, look, I'm telling you now. The communication had broken down that much. So I was devastated. You know, I had never lived on my own. I had never paid a bill. I had never done anything never taken my car in for repairs never so much as put i mean i put gas in my car but that's about it never had worked out of my car never paid bills never paid the rent um i didn't even know what the companies were the electricity the cable um all the things that i pay now i had no clue whatsoever i was scared to death and the communication was such that he was like work figure it out for yourself i mean it was like that bad that vitriolic so um and that's what we did so from that point on I think the morning that he left, I think it was January 9th-ish, something like that. I don't remember, remember exactly. But um, basically, patted me on the head and said, basically, have a good life. And there I was. <laughs> there you were. And um, from that point on, I just dug deep and I had to get strong. And we continued to, of course, film. That was where our income was coming from at mm -hmm. that point. We appreciated all the people. I mean, even like the trickles in that was coming yeah. in at that point still support us. We would get checks in the mail from people because people know it was a real, it was a reality that though you have a GoFundMe, when you pay bills, the money goes. And so and people realize that you still have to keep living. And so um, that was a very big And just help. those people who would just go back, some people said like they would just click on a playlist and just let our videos just play through and like all yeah. the ads like would hit because um, that's how we get paid from the content that we mm -hmm. do is uh, ads. So those people who watch the ads, like that's how we were paying the bills like with YouTube, with content, like yeah, that's how it was happening. Yeah, so he left, moved to Colorado. The, um, the there was even a, a, a subscriber that had Colorado in their name and I'm just like I can't I can't see you have to change your name when you show up at live it's stressing me out I can't see the word Colorado so there was just absolutely no communication of course you know he still kind of like kept in contact with you guys but um it was just a rough ride and what we did from like January on is we just lived live our life mm -hmm. at the time I said I would share with you guys how I was going to learn these things how I was going to pay bills how I was going to open up a bank account how I was going to get a credit card and all of that. But I think it became so overwhelming. It wasn't a show. It wasn't a video. It was my life. Yeah. And so it was like bring, live. It was like live. Hap like happening. Yeah. And we didn't know what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing to really teach or to show because like yeah. we were just learning as as you go, as we yeah. went. And to bring a camera, I mean, filming is nerve wracking um, when you do vlogs and stuff. But we do them because I enjoy doing them and you guys like watching them. But it is a lot. People don't aren't always receptive to the camera. You know, and then even if we ask people, like if we go to doctor's appointments or whatever, like just make sure you don't have me on the camera. Like, oh, nobody wants to see you, you know. And so, um, <laughs> but when you open up, when you go into a store, you have a camera, people are so afraid you're filming something, you know, that you're going to try to report them for something. So, so that was hard. So at that point, I said, let me just focus. I have got to do these things. It is not um, content for YouTube. This is my life. I have got to get a grasp of my life that I've sat in a marriage for 28 years and knew nothing and let my husband, a man, take care of me. And now I am stuck now I'm stuck and so I think when at, at, from, from time to time on lives I would expose or share a little bit of what was going on what we were doing um, I'm very transparent I tell all my business on my Facebook page um, and then you guys saw the anger and I think we even made a t-shirt in a cup one time when I just said I don't care like when I started feeling good about myself I was like digging deep and I was like seeing the light at the end of the tunnel I was like I don't care what anybody bring me flowers roses it will be too Oh, oh, late. Okay, all of that. Like, that's the anger period. You know, it's like they say it's like the five stages of death or yeah. something. And so I was like, I went, th I went through all of them, and then finally you like come out on the other end um, at a piece. I'm looking, I'm looking at doggy. Just keep seeing my eyes dark. <laughs> um, and then finally, like you kind of like end up at a piece. But I remember at the time his sister said, "Y'all gonna have to like break up. This is ridiculous." Because she witnessed one time on the phone me and him going back and forth, back and forth, and she's like, "This is gonna have to end. This is insane, okay? Insanity." And it was insanity. And I think that we definitely needed that space. He needed to 
I guess he felt like he wanted to do his own journey, his own cancer journey. I never understood it because I felt like I was his wife and I definitely wanted to be a part of it, but he felt like maybe the tension was just so horrible here that um, he couldn't even begin to heal. You know, I know that it affected very much my MS, so it definitely would have had to affect his cancer, this kind of tension and this arguing going on back and forth so he really had to make that decision that i've got to get out of here in order for me to live and that was good because i had to be here alone in order for me to live it was, it was bad enough the stress of the bills but then to have like relationship stress it was way too much i mean all of this like hindsight mm -hmm. is twenty twenty. like yeah. we didn't see i guess what was like i guess maybe the good that came from it mm -hmm. yeah at the time at the time it just seemed so horrible yeah but like, I couldn't believe but, like it. looking back yeah, yeah, everything kind of happens for a reason. Like everybody mm -hmm. had some growing to do. Yeah. Definitely, I know um, me and my brothers were basically just like carried our whole life. You know, yeah. we had the good life mm -hmm. until then. So you know, when my dad left, it's like, okay, here's your cell phone, here's your car payment, here's this, here's that. Like figured out, and so like, I mean, I needed that though because I was what like 25, but it was yeah. still like you know, dad, my car broke down, dad, my cell phone, dad, like this, and mm -hmm. so it was like you know, it's time to like do it on your own which might yeah. never have happened you might never have had to have paid a bill until you know right we had to do it and yeah. so looking back like i'm glad you yeah. know i think the description in the bible that says that now. all things work together for the good and that definitely worked together for the good it was a rough road but we grew so much out of it and i don't know what the purpose you never know what god's purpose is you know if you're a christian and you believe and you're a believer and you believe in the faith you could as it as I worked my way through the year, I really started seeing God's hand in this. I'm like, I literally sat up there for 28 years. Yes, I raised kids, and that is, you know, what I did. And I and I and I value that experience. I'm glad that I had it, but um, I had to be so much more. There was so much more of me that I had to offer the world. So much more that I could do. So, um, yeah, I basically was like kicked out the nest myself. Like we were all were kicked out the nest. Mm -hmm. So, but how we did it, and my kids are so wonderful. That's when I really knew that I had really raised really good kids because um, I'm like, these bills are gonna basically have to go three ways. I act like we were like college roommates in a dorm. I'm like, everything is gonna be split down the middle three ways. I never bought in a dime into this house, so I don't know how I'm going to do it. And so we split everything up three ways and we all kept a roof over our head. Everybody had like enough money to go around. You suffered a little bit for it. Um, Spencer was gainfully employed at this point. He came back and he was able to get work because he trained um, for a higher level in the military. He already had a college education and then he went to the military and got even more educated in, in um, IT. Mm -hmm. So he did that, he got a job within really like, kind of like a couple of weeks. Yeah. And so he was able to do his third I did my third, um, Jay eventually, well not eventually, that's when he said he was going to Colorado and the, the blind side was when were you going to tell me you got a job, you know, um, but he did get one and that's when he went out there and so of course at that point he was sending money back, um, we were able to sustain the house, YouTube definitely helped and um, the year went on. Mm -hmm. There were rough patches when there was no communication and I started seeing um, the people that I one time thought were friends and they supported him. And when I say support, people may not feel like it supports, like, oh, it's silly, oh, it's Facebook, but no, it, it's telling. It's very, very telling. So when I would see people encouraging his behavior out there in Colorado, him like living the life of luxury and people that I once thought were like friends or once respected the marriage and valued the marriage and they were liking things that he's doing, I took very great offense to it because I felt, how could you possibly like things that he's doing without his wife? You know, and he's like church people and stuff and I'm just like, I had no respect for that. So I think that's the biggest loss that I have is the faith in people and the faith in the institution not in god ever never in god never in jesus but um and fake phony people okay so that's the part that i probably still have to heal from and um i'm slow healing there and i'm not bothered really about that part of it because people show you who they are to be um before they tell you who they are so i saw i had long vision and so um that was the hard part and then you know then of course the children you know, of course no I, they were never asked to take sides i never ever ever would do that but it's, it's easier said than done so then adam he's the youngest even though he's not a baby but he's he's the youngest and so of course his father still reached out for him because he gave you and spencer like the luxury of um, the support up until you guys were 25 26 and adam at that point is only 19. so absolutely he still deserved to have his father hands on the way you guys did so he was sitting for him and out adam was having whirlwind trips throughout the summer and that was like difficult for me and that's when i would kind of like get started again i'd get upset and 
it was just you know facebook is a killer okay and so um so that was really really rough but as the months went on and the peace kind of found me or i found peace um you know life got easier life definitely got easier and um and, and you just have just been just unbelievable. I mean, there is just I mean, I always say people always say she's pretty, she's you know, great daughter. I mean, there's just really no words to describe. I don't think a word has been really been invented really for the kind of support. Loyal to the bone. Girl, that's why you sit right by me right now. I don't do disloyalty, but no. It really goes beyond loyalty. I mean, the sacrifices that she made, you know, um just you, she didn't have to pick a side, but you just knew where she lined up, what she respected, what she saw, how she was raised. And she just really, I'm, girl, speak what you did. Girl, I mean, what didn't you do? You know, I mean, you did things because not only did we have like the bill, the financial situation, but then the MS. Okay, so as that was happening and I was becoming more symptomatic, you were so supportive, so patient, so patient. We still would get gigs so to speak in new york where we were um, asked to do things um collab with companies we'd have to go out there and just the patience me walking the streets of new york holding your arm i mean all of these sacrifices that you made um never one time making me feel bad never abandoning me um and so it was really really a rough year so when did it start seeing like the waters were clearing a little bit maybe september October-ish, ish. I don't know. It, 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 you don't. It's like you almost don't realize think, it's clear until like yeah. it's like oh, like this is starting to kind of turn around because it's like mm -hmm. it's like little kind of you, you, like I think, efforts. I think probably doggy, doggy. I think doggy. Yeah. I think um, part of some of the, the pictures and the photos and everything I was seeing um, with Jay out in Colorado was like just living this wonderful life and everything. But he had a dog, and I just would see how he would just you know patiently walk the dog and how he got so much great joy from a dog and we wanted a dog but that really kind of amplified that thought in my mind and I'm like we need to get a dog because where I was lacking and I always say our mess is our message one day I think if you were a hands-on mother the way I was I was a hands-on mother nothing else occupied my mind nothing but my children I was a hands-on mother and I think when my children grew up I was lost I was completely lost I did not know what to do all I knew was how to love and raise my children and I was completely lost and I would speak to people about it but no one seemed to understand like empty nest like empty nest is a dead serious syndrome dead serious I mean mentally it almost took me out of here I just didn't know what to do all my skills lied in me raising these children and so when I didn't have something to do I didn't know what to do. Even though we weren't moved out, mm -mm. but there was just, we were all just you kind were, of living our lives. Spence was in the military. I was yeah. like in college. You were adults. And, yeah, we were adults. So. And the need wasn't there anymore. I think one time Adam needed to go to the air doctor and um, he asked me would I go with him or something. Talk about like Christmas coming early. I'm like, oh my gosh, absolutely. Like I was dressed to kill that day, put on makeup. Oh my God, thank you, Adam, so much for letting me go to the air doctor. Like it was not a big deal to him, but I just felt like I was in the loop still. And so that's just really how lost I was. And then the bright idea one morning, very impulsively, we had no idea what we were getting. We got him simply for his curly hair, um, was doggy. And I think at that point, that's digging right. Now. He's digging. <laughs> At that point, the joy came back into the house. The atmosphere completely changed. The kids started seeing that, like, I was a boss mother. I was, like, taking control of the house. I think at that point, I found new hope and a new life. You have to go through this life yeah, it with took, hope. Yeah, because, like, mm -hmm. it definitely took a while because then you started, you know, buying furniture mm -hmm. and fixing up the house. Like, yeah. it definitely took months. So oh, I would yeah. say, like, maybe August, September, yes. August. Yeah. Something about yeah. August, like, because yes. we, we got doggy in, what, June? June? We got him in June. We got him in June, but yeah. like something about August, like just kind of really started like flipping the house around, like yeah. just the vibe and yeah, it the was like, kind of like a touch and go thing. We were kind of sort of talking, but there still was so much hurt going on because of what we went through, and you know, you 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 have to be careful with your words when you argue because some things, you know, can be forgiven but not forgotten, whatever. Um, and so. I think that we were trying to communicate, but we would get mad like just like that all over again because of all the things that were said, the done, the, the, the treatment. I, I said my, my worst weapon is my mouth, and I think 
um, kind of like Jay's passive aggressive behavior is just as destructive. And so I think that there was just remnants of hurt there. So we would try to talk, but anybody go off the rails, just, just eatsy beatsy, we were back attacking. So that was difficult. Um, and eventually we kind of like worked our way through. And then eventually I was just like, you know what? We could never in a million years go back and track back all the hurt. It'll never, it'll never end. You know, it'll be like, well, you did this. Well, you we agreed to let it all go, you know, because now we just celebrated 29 years, November 9th. And what sense does it make? Like life is short. Okay. We did, we were together that long. We've had three beautiful children, college educated. Adam's working his way through, but why throw it all away for foolishness? Like it was a rough time. It yeah. Was a rough it was time. just a horrible, it was a horrible time. time. It was horrible illnesses. things were done. Horrible things were said like yeah. on all sides from, yeah. every, from like from everybody. Yeah. And you're right to like try to, well, you said this. Well, you did this. Well, I did that because, like, you did this. And, yeah. like, like, all you can really do is just, like, just trash the whole year. Just yeah. forget about it completely because it was just, like, so much. It's, like, how do you mm -hmm. go back through it again? Yeah. You just it, have to it let it go. It wasn't even, like, the whole year. It was, like, like a few years kind of, like, leading up to that. And so we valued the marriage much more than we did of who was right and who was wrong. And so right now we're just like we're, we're like in a new place and we're in a peaceful place and we're working towards like what like the future will look like for us but right now the reality is is that he has a job out there he is older there's nothing being given out here in Connecticut as far as jobs are concerned and we've all found our like our comfortable spot so um the marriage isn't breaking up so it wasn't too hoo -hoo -hoo late okay it was just beginning I guess and so um you know so that's that's where we're at he's still working out there we talk all the time, text all the time. Like it's just, it's like better than ever. And I've seen that before. I've heard it before. And I'm like, oh, that's so fake. I don't believe it. But no, you can really go through a rough patch and and get more out of it. You know, you learn so much. And when I sat there and realized I could have lost that, you know, I could have lost someone that I loved my entire married life. And now there ain't no options out there. <laughs> the pickings are slim to none. Okay, and so. Um, and on both sides we both said that and so that is the goal now that's what we're working towards and we just really kind of like are taking it one day at a time still like living independently still doing our thing um you started back at school that was another thing that came out of it we didn't know how that was going to happen but you kind of got i got thrown back into that in september my legs are asleep <laughs> yeah i know mine would have to stretch out too um yeah i yeah. started um I started uh, substituting um, again, basically just for for some like extra income because like I mean YouTube does it, but like I don't know. We were talking about like the algorithm and stuff. Like things are changing, and so it's kind of not really doing it right. anymore. So for me, so my end of the the three way bill thing. So I was like, you know, I need to do something else, and so I decided to start um, substitute teaching in my district, which I have been loving so much. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it so. Much. I love teaching, and I forgot how much like I love teaching. So. And you were so talented. That. And I think that you had to, if you thought it out, you would have overthought it and you would have been nervous. So the fact that you just saw the money was drying up for yourself, like you were seeing me and Spencer do our share and still having money to spare and you were just like barely making it and you hated that. So I think that the fact that you have that, you know, the college education, you were able to do that was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And that was a way for you because I always knew that you were talented. You were a talented teacher and you needed to be out there, but you just didn't know where to kind of like wet your feet at with yeah. that. So, um, so now I've like, you know, yeah, we're in December. I started in, well, actually November, almost December, but mm -hmm. I started in, uh, September and now like, I'm seriously like looking at like my options cause I'm like elementary certified, but now I want to get certified like high school. Like, mm -hmm. so I don't know, we all just kind of like found our way, found our are kind of niche so like i'm excited yeah like about that um guys don't think this is a suit okay these are <laughs> you know i love j crew okay so everything is like j crew and so these just happen to be the j crew pajama bottoms and then they kind of like stick to the same kind of a theme so that year they did the black watch plaid and so that year they had the black watch plaid, plaid scarf so this is not trying to be a suit yeah these are just this tonight is live this will be live you guys are seeing this it's on saturday yeah this we had to pre-film it so we can put it up yeah on the 23rd yeah the anniversary yeah so of the bustedness we're filming it <laughs> thursday so that you guys will see it today yeah um saturday, saturday. um but tonight's live so i always just put on my pajama bottoms for live and um have on my boots yeah <laughs> so this is not a suit <laughs> i'm insane <laughs> but some of the moral of the story is is um one that you're a boss that you <laughs> definitely did that i always say like oh what do i always say about you that nothing is um 
like un- what, what do I always, I always say about you? Nothing sa- is. I always um, figure something out. I always have a unfigurable or something you like that. It. You just about say unfigurable. You, like you figure out everything, and like that, like you figure out everything. Like I never am nervous or feel like like anything's gonna happen to me or like the family or whatever. Because like you figure everything out, so you figured it out. Like, yeah, I, I did. Year, I, like, and I think that's and it was amazing to watch. It really was. I think the mother yeah. and me, I feel, even though they were adults, I still felt like they were my children and that I never wanted them to be nervous and not have faith in me. Um, because I know, I like, Spencer, he always raised me. Me and Spencer have like a really fun, odd relationship, but he always just was like, like, don't bite the hand that feeds you, whatever. When he would see like um, me and Jay going back and forth and he's like, because he calls me madam. So he goes, madam, you know, he goes, if he ever leaves, he goes, you are going to be stuck. And I like the fact that he witnessed over the year. And I'm like, Spencer, you got to give it to me. You got to give it to me. You saw me. I was a boss. And he's like, yeah, no, like basically you did pull it together. So he always felt like, I was like um, like living out his dad, which I was at the time, but then he saw me like really like he was surprised about YouTube, how we really kind of like made like a little career for ourselves there and the collabs that we were getting and all that. So he was very, very proud of us. Um, and that just kind of made us rise um, in his eyes or like at least me, Adam was able to witness that. I, what, I, what I wanted to do was just keep the house stable, keep everything as it was. There was definitely that hole there. We absolutely missed Jay because he was a part of their lives. That's their father the entire time. So that's been a huge loss. But I think things are getting better now because definitely the communication, I think, since like August, September yeah. kind of ish. So um, that's getting better. Yeah. For those who are probably going to ask, um, my dad is fine. Like health wise, he's he's in remission yeah, right? completely. He, yeah. Like yeah. He's, he's cancer free. He's done everything right he's now. had to do. Yep, he um, did, did the radiation, and he goes back and sees the doctor every, I think, three months it is. And so he's doing everything that he needs to do, and right now, as it stands, it's not active anymore. It's in remission, um, but just very cautiously watching um, how, you know, that's going to advance, if it's going to advance, or if it's just going to stay there. So that's something that I keep in the back of my mind that kind of is like a little bit nerve-wracking. But um, again, I'm a believer, and I just believe that God did not bring us this far. You know, um, I believe that he joined us at the altar and that there is a, a bigger plan for us. And I, and I said to Jay the other day, I'm like, you know, this, I said, this is going to be our testimony. I said, we are going to help couples the way couples did not help us. When we needed help, when we needed a mature couple that had been married for a very long time to help us, like you're going to get through this. this I always say, guys, that 25 year mark, something about that 25 year mark. And I'm not the first to say, I've heard other people say it, but you would think that that is a time of, of celebration. Like it's joy. It's like, wow, I really made, is it the silver anniversary? I think it's the silver. Um, I really made it. But I'm telling you something about that 25 year anniversary. That's when it all seemed to me went downhill. And I don't know why, at least in my situation. And I've heard other people, something about those 25 years, if you can get past that part and we were not able to we got stuck and it just escalated from there so now like i said we just celebrated 29 next year it'll be 30 of course and so we plan on doing like something big for that but um we made it like we like like the marriage we made it and um that's where we're we at. made it that should be the title we made it <laughs> we made we made it out because it's been a we year we made it out alive yeah. so like, isn't that the, like escape room like you know we made it out <laughs> we made it out but, like to the people that support us and like continue to support us and like helped us people you know we got emails just throughout the year just positivity just mm-hmm. random sometimes pockets of money just you know god told me to send this to you yes. kind of thing like mm-hmm. those types of things like thank you like seriously to people who do that and who continue to do that because yeah. we definitely wouldn't have made it without mad curls no. the mad curls fam nope. at all not no i would not have i definitely would not have made that no nope. made it and um and so we appreciate that and I um, appreciate you guys, and I think that's what um, I demonstrate. I try to demonstrate on my Facebook, just making it like a family. I'm a talky person anyway, and I love sharing. So I think it really feels like family. I always feel like whenever one day we all will meet, because I swear like we'll all meet one day. Um, okay. well, that, that, that's how so disingenuous. We'll all meet. That sounds like so. We'll all meet one day. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you know, whoever we can touch and meet in person one day, it'll just be like, um, hey, girl, kind of thing. You know, I mean, it'll be exciting to see the face of the people that I always see, like the names. But it'll be like, oh my god, like, like it's actually like a real person. As I'm sure you guys will be like, oh my god, like they're real people. Like it's so cool. Yeah. Um, 
but it's just it, it really means something it really meant like the like the power of social media the power of that support you know that love and that support and it really silenced people like i felt like i had my back i felt like you know look at like all the haters it sounds so just so cliche the haters but you know when you're going through a rough time there are haters out there that they're, they're applauding in the background that's right she got everything she deserved you know they were sick of me you know and so they love to see that downfall and um but it showed the strength if folks watched them haters watched that GoFundMe more than I did okay they knew the exact dollar amount all of that and I was just like wow yeah yeah, yeah it's rising yeah we're, we're, we're being pulled out yeah there's an army of people that love us strangers by the way that love us and don't want to see us fall and then in March you guys um, voted for us to go to Florida to win the trip. We were not only when we entered in, but we were number one to go to Florida because you guys felt like, okay, you've been through enough. Now it's time for you guys to have a vacation. I mean, yeah. it's unbelievable, you know? So we give to you guys, but you guys definitely gave to us last year. Yeah. And we and, felt um, like this video definitely needed to be done. It's not overdue because this is the day. This is the day. This is the day yeah. where I lost like, it. Look what a year will do. Yeah. Like seriously, look what a year will do. But for those people who are, going through something mm -hmm. right now or have been going through something for a while what words those are going through like hang in there at the time um, it doesn't feel like it's ever gonna end or there's yeah. no light at the end of the tunnel my but. mother always said the pendulum swings both ways and it does one minute you are so 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 down and out that moment of me at the food pantry I just wanted to get out of there. I just wanted to get out of there. And it was, you know, just only one of very many, one of very many of my darkest, lowest points, then going down to the State Department, um, getting on the food stamps, um, all of that waiting in long lines, you know, all of that was very humbling. And it was something that I had to be taken through. And, you know, I came out on the other end and grateful for the experience. I really am because now I'm able to tell anyone that's going through that at a time like this at Christmas time. Again, another thing, as we said, we're going to be going in and out. We're like, we'll be wrapping it up soon. But the tree, I mentioned earlier that it was the season um, of Christmas and we couldn't even get a tree. Once again, Mackerel's army came through and we were able to get a tree because of that like the the, the, like the whole gofundme thing and so we decorated again another video yeah you'll link that one down the below tree decorating the tree decorating yep. um we, we found, put we put the receipt on the tree yeah we hung the receipt of how we paid for the tree i think the tree was like 45 dollars or something mm -hmm. and we hung that as like the last ornament on the tree and then at that point as we were doing that you guys were admiring the ornaments that we were putting on the tree, which I am a quilter, and over the years I quilted. And I think one day it was a memory with my kids when they were in second and third grade. And we, I always used to call those days when they could take off of school for no particular reason, a mental health day. So I remember one day where they stayed home from school and we made the ornaments that we hung on the tree for last year's Christmas party, so to speak, mm -hmm. on a Friday Night Live. And you guys love them so much. And then after that, we made like a, like a quick little business and I started making all the ornaments yep. really quick. And um, throughout the month of December, we were shipping ornaments that um, we made and signed. And we thank everybody that bought the ornaments last year at that point. Um, though we didn't realize at the time because we, we were not business women that we were putting out more than what we were getting <laughs> in. We had no idea. The way I we thought, priced them and the shipping, we made like... I think we broke even, if that. We broke even. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's 50 cents to ship. I mean, it's just, guys. It you said it was 50 like, cents to ship. It was like three, three or four dollars yeah, to, ship to ship each of them. Yeah. They said it didn't matter what the weight was. And we charged like six dollars or something. Yeah. yeah. We charged six dollars. Because we were going to get like a little bit of a profit, but yeah. we barely, barely broke even with that. But yeah. it was fun because at that point we felt like, like you guys would have a piece of us. Like we would sign each one. Everything was hand done. They all looked different and everything was hand inscribed by us. And um, that so fun. that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Don't even get any ideas, girl. Don't even girl. Get, don't even get I did all the sewing because your MS hand. So it was, like, it, was, it was her grand idea. But then she started like saying, you know, my hands, no, my hands, this, my hands. Like, yeah, it's, it's convenient, my convenient um, MS hand. Or, yeah. yeah. And so like, and like it was all hand sewn. So like, I think there was like pictures on your Facebook, like me, just like, like asleep in the chair, three o'clock in the morning, just like sewing all these things by hand. Yeah. Um, yeah, good times, girl. Good times. Yeah. And then I think come January, we started saying that the new thing going into the new year is that we were going to have the not bothered attitude. We were going to be so not bothered by things. That. Because we were just so not bothered. We, we were so bothered. We were so bothered. Everybody, we all admitted that we had been bothered from, for one reason or another. I completely was bothered the whole 2018. Definitely. Why? How could I not be? You know, we just explained to you why we were bothered. Yeah. But then we kind of took the laid back 
not bothered attitude some of us took it too far <laughs> we noticed the other day we're like okay this one is definitely has gotten that ensconced in their mind and they are taking it <laughs> she's too gone far. too far <laughs> she is so not bothered about anything anymore yeah. so um but we took the, the some not people bothered. were uh didn't go with it at all like you know i definitely had my moments where i was bothered i know i know we all had a rough start yeah i'm like guys are you guys bothered because there's a few things yeah, this week that yeah. has bothered me yeah there was a lot in january that was bothering me february i mean you know so yeah i had some bothered moments yeah. um i talked a good game but there were some moments where i was extremely bothered <laughs> um but as the year went on but it was a journey it was a journey a we took it as a family. We took it as a channel because, mm -hmm. like, you know, we shared different things with you guys. And you guys were just always there for us, like, no matter what. Like, good videos, bad videos, mm -hmm. you know, videos where it's like, you know, you guys seem kind of off. Probably because we yes, were. Yeah. We were off, you know. Um, and we could share at that point because the year before, you guys would say that and not knowing. And that was, like, the most painful thing that we tried to go forward and make content. And then you guys would clock us. Like, you'd be like is everybody okay we just wish light would shine with you and, I'm, and then we were like if they only knew i'm like i wish people would stop bringing it. it's so hard to film when you're upset and then when you guys identify the fact that we're upset and we weren't even ready to come out yet and tell you guys that was really difficult that we were trying to go forward yeah and um it was almost like i always say that moment when you say oh people you, oh you should smile you know i bet you have a pretty smile like don't do that i always say that okay. is my thing don't tell people to smile because you don't know why they're not smiling they could have lost a relative they could have gone through like something like this like they're going through hell so everyone doesn't need to be grilling the cheese in 24 yeah. 7 <laughs> it's not that much to smile about all the time yeah. you know so i personally don't do that um just tell somebody oh why don't you smile yeah, it's smile. jarring yeah. it's jarring to people to do, at least to me yeah you know don't ask me to smile if i'm not smiling i know how to smile i have a beautiful <laughs> smile <laughs> if i want to smile i'll smile if i don't don't tell me to smile because you don't know why i'm not smiling yeah so um but, but yeah just we just wanted to update you guys yeah, basically everything is well all is well yeah we're healing as a family individually yes. and collectively yeah. but um with those of you guys that are definitely believers, not in a dark place like we were last year so yeah for those that are believers and believe in the the power of prayer pray for our family continue to pray for our family continue for you know continued healing in our family and um yeah, we will continue to stay in touch of course yeah. like this is just one of many videos yeah. and so we, we just, just thought we definitely had to make it like it's been a year i'm like mm -hmm. let's it was such like chaos and just like implosion last year like you know let's let's give them a like an official kind of update recap update what's been going on yeah so, this video was so chill i see how long it is but you guys oh. like long videos how it's long, so long it? it's like 50 minutes right wow. now but we were wow. just just chatting with you guys yeah. so i don't have to tell you guys to leave comments i'm sure you guys are going to be in the comments sharing how you feel those of you who were there those of you who had never heard the story before um your, your own personal experiences again there we're in the comments people are in the comments like mm -hmm. commenting on other people's comments so it's just it's a safe space in the comments yeah. if so. you were having a bad time last year and you have come out on the other end like we have then then share if you're going through a bad time now if you feel comfortable sharing then share because there are people if we don't necessarily answer those particular i'm going to try to make a point of being on these comments because um this is like personal to us this is like our life and i would like to try to touch base with those that have come on to share to congratulate us to um support us you know those that are praying for us so i want to try to be respectful of that to the best of my ability you know um but you know share as much as you feel like don't share it all just enjoy the video we appreciate you watching the video and hearing yeah. our update yeah and those yeah. of you who continue to support mad girls because this is this is the biz this is the gig yeah you know so Thank you guys. Thank you so much. I'm my girls fan. I wish I could do that. Never. Girl, here we go. Here we go. All right, all right. Those oh, mittens. Oh, look at perfect. They're all bundled up. You're freezing. We're freezing out here. <laughs> and I think Doug is ready to go in too. So. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and for loving us. We love you back. We do. We do. We do. And um, they'll see us in our next video. They'll see us in our next video. In our next video. All, all right. right, guys. All right. Bye, Bye. guys.